Warning, this video will show very explicit and graphic scenes of fires and burn victims. Some nude injury victims are also included in this program. If you do not want to watch these very graphic scenes, please notify your trainer now to be excused from this program. There will be no further warning. Throughout the world, there is property destruction and injuries every minute of the day and night because of fires. One unintentional fire is one too many, but it seems no matter what we do or say, unintentional fires continue to burn. What's the answer? Obviously, if everyone took fire prevention seriously, at work and at home, there would be a dramatic reduction of unintentional fires. Training is great for those who don't fully understand fire science and fire prevention. Training does make a difference, but only if you use and apply the knowledge learned from training programs. But what do you do for those people who know better? Those people who have been trained, experienced, and understand fire prevention information. It's human nature to believe that nothing will happen to you or that a fire will not occur at your job or home. Almost everyone understands the risk, but they just don't believe that it will happen to them. This attitude is just human nature, and we all experience it. You see on TV and in the newspapers that a house burned down and four children were killed. You hate to see that happen and feel sympathy for the victims, but in the back of your mind, you say, that's not going to happen to me. The thought or sight of someone that's been burned is very horrible, but especially children. Unfortunately, it happens on a daily basis, every day, 365 days a year. The horrible part of this scenario is that it continues to occur day in and day out. Safety rules and fire prevention techniques are fairly standard throughout the world today because when a fire or major accident occurs, it is investigated to determine the cause. Then rules, procedures, or safety operating systems are developed to prevent a similar accident from happening again. That's one reason that most buildings have stringent fire codes. It's based upon experience and investigation of fires. Your company and 90% of all organizations use these rules and procedures to prevent fires and related injuries. The weakest link in preventing accidents has always been the human factor. Someone forgets to pay attention or neglects a procedure or whatever. It's human nature. As an example, you're working in an office where it's nice, neat, clean, organized, and it appears that an accident would never occur. You've been there 20 years and have never experienced an accident or injury. It's a safe place to work. Here's a photo of an individual who had been working in the same office for over 20 years, accident-free. Unfortunately, this was a period of time when smoking was allowed in offices. This individual was using some standard cleaning fluid to clean his desk and equipment. The cleaning fluid was flammable. A match ignited the flammable vapor rising from the desk. There was a very quick explosion that engulfed the entire desk and surrounding area, burning the individual quite severely. Fire extinguishers were used to extinguish the fire, but the damage had been done. Twenty years of accident-free work down the drain. An unpleasant and extensive time in the hospital, plus rehabilitation is a heavy price to pay. How could a simple bottle of cleaning fluid be so destructive? The first rule of flammable liquid safety is that care must be taken to use them properly, free of ignition sources, good ventilation, and to use them only as they were intended. Always follow the manufacturer's instructions, material safety data sheets, and warning labels. If you don't know the proper procedures for handling flammable liquids, ask your supervisor. Proper flammable liquid containers must be used. A proper flammable liquid container is a metal can with a spring-loaded top and a flame arrestor inside the can to prevent flames from entering the container. Plastic cans or other containers should not be used for flammable liquids. Additionally, proper bonding and grounding must be used when transferring flammables from one container to another. One metal container is grounded to a metal pipe or other suitable ground. This ground wire drains static electricity to ground. 
the bonding wire is attached to the other metal container, making a ground between the two metal containers. Bonding and grounding reduce the potential of static electricity. Static electricity has caused a number of explosions of flammable liquids during the transfer of liquid from one container to another. Of course, never allow sparks or other ignition sources near flammable liquids. Most hairspray is very flammable, and when you spray it into your hair, the hairspray is mixed with air, making it a very sensitive mixture of flammable gas or vapor. It can explode. It can ignite. It can burn. Have you ever seen a person using hairspray and the vapors from the flammable liquid catch on fire? Fire is devastating to the human body. Even a very quick flame can seriously injure your skin. Let's take a look at a janitor working in a manufacturing facility. This person was a dedicated employee that always followed the rules, but he had not been properly trained in the use of acetone. Acetone is a flammable liquid that is used in a wide range of activities, including painting, removing paint, and it is used extensively in nail polish remover. Somehow the vapors of the liquid were ignited. The individual was in a sitting position close to the pan at the time that the explosion occurred. Two other individuals nearby were also injured. The investigation determined that static electricity or another ignition source caused the explosion but could have been prevented with proper procedures. Gasoline stations have a number of warnings to consumers, such as don't breathe the vapors, don't top off, and shut off the motor before refueling. This particular individual was operating a motorcycle, but he didn't heed the warning of shutting off the motor while refueling. A gasoline spill contacted the hot motor and exploded. Unfortunately, the operator was still sitting on the motorcycle at the time. He was the only person injured in the explosion, and the service station manager quickly extinguished the fire. Here is a spray paint operator that allowed the flammable vapors of the spray to come in contact with an ignition source, specifically someone using an electric drill nearby. The electrical spark of the drill caused the explosive vapors to ignite. He was wearing a respirator and following most of the rules. However, observing most of the rules means he ignored some rules. He saw the drill nearby, but didn't stop spray painting or stop the electric drill work until he finished. Is it really worth it to save a couple of minutes to take chances? He certainly doesn't think so now. How many warnings have there been about smoking in bed? Television stations would run announcements 24 hours a day for 10 years, and there would still be some people who just won't listen to warnings. It happens every day. This gentleman was refueling a forklift while smoking. The fuel was propane, which is a flammable gas. Propane is a flammable gas that can be ignited by an ignition source. Ignited vapors can result in a very severe burn. Hopefully, everyone knows that propane gas is cold and can create a deep skin burn if your skin comes in contact with the extremely cold temperatures of the gas. It's sort of a dual hazard, so extra caution should be taken when handling or using propane. Smoke kills. One of the rules of using fire extinguishers is to extinguish the flame only if it's safe to do so. If there is a threat to your safety, get out of the building and leave the firefighting to the professionals. Here is an individual trapped by smoke and could not find his way out of a burning building. He was attempting to put out the fire, but tried to be a hero. Smoke kills more people in a fire than the actual fire. People overcome with smoke become quickly confused, can't function properly, and die before the fire reaches them. If you're caught in a smoke-filled room, get out quickly. If the smoke has filled the room, get on the floor and crawl to the nearest exit. Smoke rises, so the best safety measure is to stay on the floor and crawl. Most of the people killed in fires are killed by smoke, not the actual fire. You've all seen and heard about the MGM Grand Hotel and other hotel fires. Smoke is the major killer, but fire can cause panic. When a fire approaches, people are afraid of the fire, so they jump out of windows or take chances that they would otherwise not take. 
panic can turn a prudent person into an irrational, crazed individual that does desperate things. It's human nature that affects us all. It greatly affects those who don't have the knowledge and training about fires, smoke, and how to survive. Lack of knowledge is the big killer in fires. Housekeeping. One of the most important fire prevention techniques is good housekeeping. Proper storage, clean work areas, not placing anything near water heaters, ignition, or heat sources. Proper storage and keeping exits clear are also important parts of fire prevention. What generally happens in a fire situation? Lights and electricity are usually shut off, so that means it could be dark when you're trying to find an exit. Emergency lighting should be provided. All aisleways and paths to exits must be clearly marked, lighted, and unobstructed. Exit doors must never be locked. Emergency stairways must be inspected to make sure the doors remain closed but not locked. If the doors are closed, this prevents smoke and fire from entering the stairwell area. Electrical panels must remain unblocked. Don't stack material near electrical panels, emergency equipment, or fire extinguishers. Proper emergency action procedures must be in place. Everyone trained in emergency procedures and, of course, fire drills should be practiced at least once each year or more often. How long has it been since you had a fire drill? Your company's fire sprinkler should be inspected frequently to make sure the system would work in case of a fire. Of course, does everyone know how to use fire extinguishers? Maybe you think so, but until you've been trained, you might not know how to use an extinguisher in case of an emergency. It's not as easy as it looks, but if you've been trained, it can be a lifesaver. Whether it's at home, play, or work, fire prevention is a serious responsibility. Many of these accidents may have occurred because the person was not paying attention, disregarding safety rules, or generally ignoring proper fire prevention rules and safety standards. These results often occur from just plain neglect. It's a horrible destruction of human life that doesn't have to happen. What's the answer? Fires and resulting injuries and death can be avoided. Unplanned fire is avoidable. Burns and death are avoidable. It takes a concentrated effort on your part to follow company policies and procedures. Good housekeeping, training, following the rules, asking questions if you're not sure about something. All these things require extra effort. Take a look in your home. Do you have fire extinguishers in the kitchen area? Most home fires occur in the kitchen. Do you have smoke detectors? How many times have you heard people say that they don't need smoke detectors because they have a pet dog in the house? In case of smoke, the dog will wake up and alert everyone. Actually, pets can be overcome with smoke just like humans. Some dogs wouldn't wake up if there were an explosion in the house, so don't rely upon pets as a fire detection system. Have you inspected the wiring and electrical systems? Shorts and wires or overloading electrical system causes fires. Any fire hazards in your garage? Storing flammable liquids and paint in garages can cause fires. Flammable liquid vapors generally stay low to the ground. That's why hot water heaters must be mounted at least 18 inches higher than the garage floor. If you have leaking flammable liquid containers, your car engine can't ignite the vapors. Many times we don't think about these things. Do you have a floor plan and emergency procedures for proper evacuation in case of fire? Do you have emergency phone numbers posted? Of course, people who smoke 
have a special responsibility for fire prevention. The same thing applies at work. When you leave this training program, check your work area. Do you know where the exits and fire extinguishers are located? What if the main exit is blocked? Do you know the alternative exit route? What would you do if both exits were blocked by fire? In case of fire, you should go to a designated area so supervisors can take a head count to make sure everyone is out of the building. Look around your work area. Are there any flammable liquids? And if so, are they in proper metal containers and placed inside flammable liquid lockers or cabinets? Check cleaning and janitorial supplies for flammables. Inspect closets and other out-of-the-way areas to make sure they are not potential bombs waiting to happen. If you haven't been trained on fire extinguishers, ask your supervisor for some training. Take a look at your emergency action procedures to make sure they're up to date. Do you have octopus plugs on electrical outlets? If so, get rid of them. Do you have small heaters under your desk? Heaters can ignite combustible materials such as paper, cardboard, and carpeting. Make a decision to prevent fires. Take action now and be prepared. If you don't have the training, get the training or learn about it on your own. Not only at work, but when you travel, think about where you're staying. Do they have a sprinkler system and smoke detectors in the hotel? Are emergency exits lighted and clearly identified? How do you escape in case of fire? Most people don't pay any attention to these things when they check into a hotel. They assume the hotel has taken all necessary precautions. Your life may depend on it. Do you use outdoor cooking at home? What type of charcoal lighter do you use? Gasoline, lighter fluid, or flammable liquids? Not a good choice. There are new products on the market that will avoid the use of flammable liquids to start charcoal. Think about the consequences and take the steps necessary to prevent a fire or explosion. Fire prevention is said to be common sense. That may be true, but it's also knowing what to do and how to do it in case of fire. It's taking an individual effort to find potential fire hazards and eliminate them. It's making fire prevention second nature. Every time you go into a restaurant, think fire safety. Look around and see where the exits are located. When you visit someone or another building, think fire safety. It takes only a second, but if you do it every time, it becomes a habit. Fire safety should never be taken lightly, no matter where you work, play, or sleep. The consequences are just too great, and it's not a pretty picture. If you're still not convinced, just visit local hospitals with a burn ward. Ask the patients what they think of fire prevention. These pictures don't have to happen. Make sure you're not starring in the next one. Thank you.